What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jay. This is the ESP LTD M1000 HT. Uh, yeah, they're giving Ivan as a run for their money with the naming. I wanted to love this guitar as the thumbnail states, but there is one thing that's kind of holding me back. We'll get into that in a little more detail further on in the video. So, what are we looking at here? Obviously, it's a super strat, and uh, it just uh, right off the bat, this thing looks gorgeous. And spoiler alert, it sounds really good too. <laughs> This uh, finish they're calling Black Natural Fade for obvious reasons. It's got the high gloss finished body, satin finished neck. Uh, the neck is a three piece maple neck with Makassar ebony fingerboard, which looks really beautiful. And it is a neck through construction. So it goes all the way through the body. And then you've got two alder wings for the remainder of the body to make that up. <laughs> The fingerboard inlays, let's talk about that for a minute. So these are offset, which is what actually what I prefer. If you're gonna have inlays at all, I prefer them up on the top like that as opposed to straight down the center, which is more traditional. Just looks a little more modern to me, a little cleaner. You know, it has it gives me the vibes of like the Ibanez Petrucci models back in the day. Hip shot bridge, you've got Fishman Fluence modern pickups with the, uh, the two voicings with the push-pull tone pot. Okay, so now I'm gonna run through the different voicings starting with the push-pull in, which is basically the active sound voice one for the pickups, starting with the bridge. <laughs> Middle position. Neck. And now we're going to go with the uh, push pull up, which is more of Fishman's passive sound, uh, basically voice two, starting with the bridge again. Middle. And neck. And you've got LTD branded locking tuners, which as far as I can tell, seem to work really well. There are no uh, Luminlay side dots, if that's something that you're looking for, but it does have the stainless steel frets and the fret work here is perfect. It's amazing. It, there's just flawless. <laughs> Yeah. 
I'm finding more and more so that some of the higher end guitars, you know, the guitars costing $500 to $1,000 on up, seem to be coming out of the factories, no matter where they are, just generally with a better fret fret ends and better fret treatment. I, I don't like to generalize with things like that, but that's what I found recently with some of the higher end guitars I've been checking out. So let's talk about the neck in a little more detail. This is what they're calling uh, LTD's ultra thin U-shaped neck. It is very thin. It's on par with like an Ibanez wizard neck, which is also very thin. So if you know what that feels like, this is very, very similar to that. It's comfortable. The satin finish is really nice. I can slide on that very easily, get around, maneuver, no problem. I, nobody likes a lacquered finish, guys. So every manufacturer that's doing that whole thing, please stop because nobody really wants that. It's a compound radius, very similar to Charvel's 12 to 16. It's 300 to 400 millimeter compound radius, essentially, which I do like. Uh, I don't find it necessary to have a compound radius, but I get what it's for. Um, you know, a little more comfortable to do your chord work here in the first positions, the lower register, and then a little flatter fretboard for the shreddy stuff that you're going to do up here, uh, higher up the neck. Other than the thinness of the neck, I really do like the shape. It's, it's quite nice and comfortable. Um, in that aspect, in that it's a U-shape more than a D, which is a little bit of a harsher, has harsher shoulders to it. But what I've found with this guitar so far is that it tends to almost not have a shoulder at all. If you're looking at the neck kind of like this, you know, down the neck, um, the shoulders begin to curve in almost immediately. There's kind of no like vertical, like think of a, a half pipe, right? There's always a little bit, a foot or two of vertical, a vert before the transition. This neck has no vert. It just basically goes up to vertical and then it, it ends. So the edge of the neck, the very edges, uh, to me feel quite sharp because of that fact, because it kind of curves up and stops and then you've got the fretboard there with the slight you know, radius to it. It is a little bit fatiguing to me too in my hand after a while because it has that kind of sharp edge and that's really the main concern for me. That's the one thing that I found that's a little bit of a deterrent, makes me not want to pick up the guitar as often as something else that's more comfortable. You can feel that bottom edge just kind of push into your the inner side of your knuckle there, or the inner portion of your hand. And it's obtrusive. It feels like it's in the way. I think that some manufacturers still have this mindset that you need to be making the guitar or the neck specifically more dedicated for the shredder. It's got to be ultra flat, very wide, very thin, and you know, either a compound, fancy compound radius, or just a really flat fingerboard in order to do the shred stuff. Obviously, you can see people online shredding on every brand, every type of guitar that there is. I don't think you need to have a special dedicated type neck to do that kind of stuff anymore. I think that's kind of an antiquated thought process. Well, I heard about Pearl Harbor on the radio. You know, they're still trying to do that whole thing, and it's not necessary. And there's people with different size hands. It's like, if you want to sell more units, make something that's more compatible to a larger audience. So I would recommend to ESP um, any one of the following three things or any combination of those. Uh, first would be make the neck, you know, have a little more vertical before it cut, cuts in. So it's not immediately just carving right in. Okay, it can still be a thin neck, but just have a little bit of vertical shoulder before it begins to curve. Number two would be kind of to do the rounded off, more soft edge like Charvel does, which makes their necks extremely comfortable. Uh, they just file the edge more so, you know, before they put the frets on, I guess. And it just has that nice rounded, soft edge, which if you've never touched one, when you do, you're like, yeah, this is perfect. And then number three is you don't need to make the neck you know, ultra wide or so much wider than a standard typical neck that you would find on an Ibanez, a Jackson, something to that effect. Your string spacing at the bridge is still the same. Uh, the string spacing here at the nut is a little wider than typical. I think it's 43 instead of 42 millimeters, which is fine, not a big deal, but for some reason the neck is just so much wider beyond the strings than it really needs to be. I, I say so much, I mean it's a millimeter if it's that or you know it's it's a couple sixty fourths of an inch. But you feel the difference and it's just not as comfortable because of those three factors. That's where you're doing all your work on the instrument is on the neck so it's got to be as comfortable as possible. That's a consideration you know they can take it or leave it. Who am I anyways right? But this guitar 
It is really beautiful and it just sounds great. And this is my first time playing Fishman Fluence Moderns. Now, I did recently review the, the Tim Henson Ibanez with the Fishman Fluence classic open cores with his own voicings. Those are a little bit different. These have the modern sound I've been looking for. I've heard other reviewers talk about the Fishman Fluence Moderns and say that they can be too harsh in certain frequencies or that they're too trebly sometimes. They give too much of the higher range of frequencies. Uh, I haven't found that really to be so yet. You know, I've only been playing through a couple different um, plugins. Mainly, I've been using Neural DSP stuff like the Gojira, Verbia, stuff like that, uh, Fort and Cali. And this, these pickups sound great through those. I don't think a lot of other uh, reviewers are really talking about neck shape to this extent, right? I know I just wasted five minutes of your time talking about it, but otherwise, this guitar is 10 out of 10. This thing is a joy to play. It just looks badass. I mean, let's be honest, right? That thing looks sick. If you're going to do like this fade type of color, that is absolutely the way to do it. But this guitar is one you might want not want to sleep on. Uh, this is my first ESP that I've ever played and really having a blast with this thing. First time playing through the Fishman Fluence Moderns. They sound incredible. Check out my link below for Zounds.com. I fill the link down below in the description box. That's pretty much it for today, guys. I uh, really appreciate you guys watching the video. If you're not following the channel yet, Make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's right there. It's right. Just press it. Just click it. It's right. Literally right. I'll talk to you guys soon. I'm out of here. See ya.